it's Miley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, September 24th. Okay, so we had a moon day here yesterday, giving us a little bit of time to kind of get our heart and our head in alignment. Of course, there is brand new energies coming at us. It's a little bit buzzy all up in the headspace. We are in an air season, so we do have to kind of expect that. But for the most part, we are moving into, I would say, calmer waters, if you will, compared to the build up towards that equinox energy, the build up to Venus kind of shifting out of her rulership and moving into Scorpio energy. We have been feeling the energy simmer just a tad, although let me also just say today we have the moon shifting out of the Gemini energy at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Cancer energy, which of course the moon rules over. We'll be locking into that particular energy at 10.51 a.m. A lot of people have a hard time when the moon is in her rulership and cancer energy because, of course, it's very emotional. We're super sensitive. We're in defense mode. We're attached to the past. And because we are also going to be experiencing the last quarter moon of this lunar phase take place in this cancer energy, there's going to be a little bit of a heaviness, a weight on our heart space. We are in review mode. We are in completion mode. We are definitely going to have a different type of energy take over us here today because, of course, we are in Libra season. We're trying to find peace, harmony, and balance. We're trying to come to a certain term of acceptance with a lot of situations and circumstances that have popped off that are pretty much out of our control at this point, but there's still some residual energy. There's still some loose ends that we need to tie up. And so having this moon event take place in its rulership, there's always a huge activation of the heart space. It always does kind of layer on the funk, if you will, before we can realize where we have to break free of it. But because we're in labor season, there is that air energy. So we're definitely going to have a totally different perspective of our situations and our circumstances come front and circle. So there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in this Gemini energy, again, pushing for our heart and head to get into alignment, pushing for new perspectives, pushing for new ideas, pushing to really satisfy our curiosity. The moon is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with its ruler, Mercury. Mercury, of course, you know, we're all up in the head space. We are kind of nearing the final degrees of his rulership here in the Virgo energy. And again, reminder, Mercury in this Virgo energy is focused on the problem so that we can fix them, we can heal them, we can re repair them. But ultimately, where we can make some improvements, where we need to kick some bad habits to the curb, where it is that we need new ones, where it is that we need to shift our focus again, now that we're nearing the end of this Virgo cycle into what it is that we've actually accomplished, we've actually dealt with, we actually realize needs to change, needs a little bit of improvement. So emotionally speaking, the moon and this Gemini energy, mentally, of course, the mental plane, Mercury in Virgo energy, the square is highlighting where it is that we're going through growing problems, growing pains, if you will. Going to highlight the tension and the conflict. Emotionally speaking, we are actively trying to kind of move on, move forward. We're kind of extroverted, if you will, emotionally. We want to go out into the world, bounce some ideas off of some people, see what comes back to us. Well, Mercury and Virgo energy, very focused in our inner realm, very focused on the finer details of what is currently problematic in existence. We want to focus on that. We don't really want to focus outside of, you know, what we're dealing with. We don't want to create something new. We don't want to dabble into new ideas where emotionally speaking, the moon and Gemini would prefer we distract ourselves with that. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, though. Uranus is the great awakener. He's retrograde in this Taurus energy, trying to kind of illuminate for us where it is that we're holding on to the physical realm, to old people, places and things, to possessions, to ideas, to concepts that we know we've outgrown, but yet we are holding so desperately onto them because we're waiting for something better to come along before we're willing to release it. The moon interacting with Uranus is definitely going to put us in a different mind space to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, especially with how it is that we've been functioning, how it is that we've been taking care of ourselves, how it is that we have been, again, addressing the areas of concern to try and make some improvements. We are going to have a major shift in our mentality 
in our perspective. We are going to see ourselves and see the actions, the patterns, the behaviors that we are essentially repeating in our physical realms. We're going to see that from a different lens, a different light. And although this is bringing a little bit of a clarity, a little bit of an epiphany and aha moment, it's probably going to be pretty jarring to realize that, spoiler alert, you're the problem. Get out of your own damn way. Do what it is that you know you need to be doing because again, once you know better, you absolutely have to do better. Information is useless unless you put it to good use. The moon is going to get into the boxing ring with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his placement of power here in the Pisces energy, which should also indicate to us that the moon is nearing the final degrees of this Gemini energy as again, Neptune at the final degrees of Pisces. Again, we're getting into the boxing ring. We're fighting it out, but this time it is because Emotionally speaking, we're leaning more into the logical, practical, rational part of our brain in that Gemini energy, while Neptune, of course, and Pisces energy is about our imagination, about our ability to come up with creative solutions, thinking outside of the box, understanding that we have to have a goal, a vision, a dream in mind in order for us to actually try to manifest new situations, new circumstances. So the growing pain here is how do we balance what we know to be true in our mental plane, logically, practically speaking, with what it is that we know to be true in our intuition, in our emotions? You know, you can't prove it. You can't really give other people the evidence of it. But trust me, when you have a calling, when something is nagging at you and there's no rhyme or reason for it, that's your higher self. That's your intuition. That is your gut. That is your emotions trying to show you where it is that you can't let the physical realm and your current circumstances dictate what is possible for you. So the growing pain here is how do we balance what we logically practically know we should be doing or we need to do or we need to kind of change or transform with what we know in our gut, in our heart space, in our intuition that we have to do that, of course, we have no physical proof of. We just know that there's a pull to kind of changing things up, doing what we have to do to, again, visualize where it is that we would like to end up, even though our physical circumstances may not actually support logical, practical line from here to there. We have to balance it out using our intellect and our intuition. So it is this particular juncture at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that the moon is going to go void, of course. This is when things get shaky, unstable, uncertain, when we start second guessing ourselves, really doting. We definitely could highlight it to where it is that, again, we're not feeling so sure, we're not feeling so certain. While the moon is void in this Gemini energy, we're going to make a very harsh interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who of course is retrograde at the final degrees of Capricorn energy, again, giving us an opportunity to kind of take a good look at where it is that there's still a power struggle going on, where it is that the old remnants of the old version of self and therefore the old realm and reality are still alive and well, and where it is that we have this last hurrah to actually bring it down to actually complete it to actually destroy it to actually clear it out of our way so emotionally speaking we are definitely going to be losing ourselves in some not so nice thoughts some not so nice feelings but again pluto takes us down the very dark memory lane if you will um, in order for us to kind of put things in a better perspective, Pluto ultimately uh, gives us this tough love life lesson, kind of exposes to us the darkest parts of our emotion, the darkest parts of our mental plane, the darkest parts of our programming, so that we can become aware of it. Because once you become aware of it, you can flip the script into something better. You can take power and control back over your emotions, over your mental plane, and therefore you can put forth in action once the heart and head agree in order to break out of certain patterns, certain cycles, certain behaviors. So it's not going to feel good, but it is going to reveal to us where a major change, a major transformation, not only in our heart space, but our head space is definitely required. 1051 AM Eastern Standard Time, the moon is shifting into her rulership in this cancer energy. It's a very interesting dynamic because nothing happens. We shift into this cancer energy again, 1051 AM. 1.27 p.m., we have an absolute banger of an aspect taking place, which doesn't involve the moon at all. 
it is between Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, and Uranus, the great awakener. Well, let's just put into perspective that Uranus is the higher octave, if you will, of our intelligence. It's where, you know, our solar spirit connects to the higher realms of intelligence. It's where we gain insight, gain epiphany, where we suddenly have these brilliant genius moments of aha moments that totally change the game for us. Mercury, on the other hand, rules over the lower level intellect where logic, practicality, rationality takes place. That's how we plan. That's how we strategize on how we're going to bring some of these aha moments into our physical form. So this is going to be a brand new perspective. This is mind opening, mind altering. Once you know you can't unknow, there are new ideas, new perceptions, new solutions. There are new conversations that are just repeating themselves in our head because we've missed something. The smaller details, again, that Virgo energy that Mercury's in, the smaller details of these bigger ideas that we've been downloaded with or these smaller details of these big conversations that we've had, the smaller details of these now bigger perceptions and perspectives that we are now forming, this is where the magic is. So this is definitely going to definitely affect our central nervous system. So again, listen to the Ascension forecast that I put out for this week so that you understand where the energy is actually manifesting in our physical form. But this is definitely going to be buzzy. It's going to be jolty, if you will. Um, it is a trine, which means that we're working with like-minded elements. And in this case, it's earth on earth. But we're talking about the higher realms of intelligence having a moment of genius that we have to bring into this earthly realm. And of course, you know, with Mercury and Uranus kind of pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone, especially in the parameters of our thought process, we are definitely going to, again, have some excitement kind of fester, a buzz, if you will, really kind of capture our attention. And we're going to be running with that planning and strategizing how it is that we are going to bring some of this information into the physical form. The moon in cancer energy now going to trine beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money now in the Scorpio energy. So water on water action. OK, let's talk about it. Water on water action, first of all, helps to cleanse and purify the heaviness, the weight of the emotions of the thought of the circumstances in which we've been in. Once there is this initial, you know, washing over, if you will, uh, then the water energy kind of refreshes us. It renews our soul, our spirit, our creativity. And because Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money is doing, you know, her shadow work, the depths of her darkness, the depths of her passion, the depths of her desires here in the Scorpio energy, emotionally speaking with the moon now in her rulership, we're taking a good look at now what is working and what isn't. Who is going to continue to be a part of our lives and who it is that we are again, cutting off as far as soul contracts go. May I remind you, we are still in eclipse season, okay? So we're not in power, we're not in control, and relationship dynamics, soul contracts are the major, you know, focus right now, especially because now we're in Libra season where we are partnership focused, relationship focused, especially the relationship that we're building with ourselves. And the more we build ourselves up, what that means for the ever changing landscape of the relationship dynamics that again, we're continuing to pour into. So emotionally speaking, we are definitely going to unearth, uncover new passions, new desires. And the minute that we realize that we also realize the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are preventing us from wholeheartedly going after said passion, said desire, said goal. The moon is then going to get into the boxing ring and square off with the sun. This is what gives us our last quarter moon phase. And anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of what we have to do, what we have to pursue. And because we're in a completion series, this is likely going to be a revelation on what we have to cut off, what we have to wrap up, what we have to leave in the past, leave behind. We are going to be gaining perspective through taking stock, taking inventory, who and what needs to stay and needs to go. It is definitely going to be, um, I'm going to say a little bit heavy, 
it, the square, again, illuminates the growing pains that we're having. The moon in Cancer, very attached to the past, very attached to keeping things the same. And of course, the sun shining a bright light now in Libra energy is focused on where the scales in our lives are out of whack. We have to identify where the in or the unbalance in balance is in order to bring it back into balance. So again, aha moments on what we have to end, what we have to put behind us, what we have to cut off, what we have to close the door on. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So we're actually, although that's tension filled aspect, we're actually feeling a lot lighter, a lot brighter, a lot more in power, a lot more in control. We are in a better position to grow, to heal, to evolve, especially in realizing this new version of self is anchored in. We're trying different things. We're moving on. It's taking us a shorter time to process some of the heaviness, to process some of the weight. And so, you know, emotionally speaking, we're actually feeling a little bit warrior like we're feeling like we can rise to the occasion, like we have we can do what we have to do in order to wrap these cycles up and put them behind us. The moon is going to get into the boxing ring and square off with the north node, though. This is the last thing that we have going on here today. And so the north node trying to get us on the right path, trying to show us where it is that we have to kind of be independent, where we have to move along kind of on this independent solo journey to reach our soul's mission, our soul's potential, our soul's purpose. The issue here is because the North Node in Aries energy is so focused on the future. And of course, the moon and cancer energy overly attached to the past. So we're not even in the present moment. Emotionally, we're still reflecting back. We're still very connected to, very attached to situations and circumstances that have already transpired, but they haven't been fully wrapped up, fully closed yet. There's some lingering details there. And the North Node in Aries energy wants to show us where it is that we have to kind of get over these issues and do what we have to do to kind of close the door on these issues because we have a path that we need to follow. We have a goal that we need to reach. We have a vision that we now have to actively start manifesting. And we can't do that if our energy is still connected, still attached to the old version of self, the old realm and reality that that old version of self has created. We have to close that door. And in most cases, there is gonna be an aspect where we're going to have to nail that sucker shut.